Hello brothers and sisters, this is Sir Eisenstein, Captain of the Iron Hands. Today we will be looking into the latest event, the Wetway, and how to play round and get consistent 12 win victories all day long. Before I start I would like to make a quick apology as my release schedule has been heavily delayed due to having my in-laws in the house so I, couldn't, I didn't have time to play the game and record as well so they just left yesterday hopefully from today and onwards my release schedule should be getting back to the normal so if you have any requests or whatsoever please let me know in the comments now for this event I've been enjoying a lot mainly because as you can see in the 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 victory uh, title here um, the counter whatever it's 50 50 both sides of the factions both the sisters of silence and the chaos guys they are pretty equally matched and some of the warlords you can also play them in different ways such as the realm however i don't think it is as clear cut as it seems here it's not 50 50 in my opinion if you know how to play the realm as i will show in this video i think you will have a clear advantage um, I did a good number of um, Tenix run games, um, pretty much all of them was 12 wins, the worst one I had was 10, uh, 10 wins and that, that also included two disconnections as I was playing on my way to the airport in the train. Um, so starting off with this video, it's gonna be three sections, first of all I will talk about some of the basic strategies that could be helpful, how I play RAM. Secondly, I will go through the ugly tier list you see in the, the screen now. Um, no, the resolution hasn't dropped. For some reason, tier maker made the photo really bad quality. I tried it many times. It uh, it doesn't work for some reason. Um, and lastly, uh, after the court, court cards, we will look in the individual warlords as well and how to adjust your pay, uh, play style against each one of them. So without further ado, let's let's crack on with the the first part now most people how they play realm is is quite aggressive they start first turn they start face bashing their opponents and you know usually games finish in turn five six seven whatever it's it's quite a fast sort of pace event for the realm i personally don't like to play that fast um i will do i will attack early on just for once, just to give the opponent the impression that I will be a brain dead zombie, just keep face bashing them, so they will play in that regard, but after that I will play a lot more conservatively. The mainly because is, once you are low HP, the game could go both ways, of course you have the more HP, of course you could just smash and win the game, but this, the same could happen to the enemy as well, they could just have that one card or multiple variations of that single card and you wouldn't be expecting it and it just happens. Do you remember that in the events the standard rules of the card numbers do not apply? You could have more than one of the set legendary or you could have 10 of the same card, there's no limit to it. So I like to play Ram a little bit more conservatively than the most. I, will, I like to use the Ram itself, the Warlord, to keep the board clean and then drop some high HP troops to basically dominate the dominate the board control. Now looking at the cards is, having said that, starting off number one is, let me go turn this image off, I will include the image in the, in the description as well so you can go and look at it. So going to the word bearers, of course they are diverse traitors here. So, one of the best cards to get, um, you will get minimum of two legendary cards. You get your first selection legendary and the last selection is legendary by default. So you will have chance to have at least two legendaries in your list so you don't need to spend any gems. But if you have the chance, do you get Architect of the Heresy? Now in my opinion, this is the best um, legendary card to take, actually the best card to take for the Rom in this event. Um, mainly because, especially if you're playing a little bit of the slower playstyle as, as I like to play, is if you're playing against, for example, Sisters of Silence at turn 10, they're going to be dropping their Raptor Guard, which heals them and gives them that you know big flank terror infantry troop 
and you can just steal it right away. And after that, they have nothing. If you're playing Realm, again, if they drop any of the big guys in, you know, you saw Talgatron or their Dark Martyr, thinking that they just gonna finish the game, but you drop seven and seven energy, steal the infantry of Astartes troop, and then you'll be laughing to your face. Again, if they have the same card, it could go both ways, but in my opinion, this is the biggest game changer. Um, it, this card just saved so many games to me, and the, the only 10x victory I had was um, without this card as well. Although they were disconnected games, I'm still blaming not having this card. Other than that, some of the other cards to look into is this guy here. Let me try to find him. Not him. Not him. Him. Now you will be saying, why is it so good? It just free energy card doesn't do anything special. But here's the gist: the game of the, the games in this event is usually decided quite early on. If you are playing against a realm, for example, the game is going to be decided fairly early on, or Sister of Silence as well. If you have the board control, that's going to carry you throughout the game. And especially, as I mentioned, you're playing a slower type of realm that aiming for a little bit of the late game with the you know, high energy cost troops. This guy is just going to do so much work, especially if you can drip it to the first, first um, card. You can just um, sacrifice him and then attack with your warlord to kill a bigger troop which will have 6 damage in total um, and there's not that many troops in the event that will have 6 HP or more um, you drop this first, enemy drops the same, you can just kill it and then heal it Sisters of Silence, especially against Sisters of Silence, this card will be phenomenal mainly because the Shinitzels of Silence, as I will call them, because it's very easy to beat them with Ram. Um, they have lots of low HP troops at the moment. After their nerf, their troops are a little bit weak. And this guy just can keep the board clean with the Ram's help. Um, other than that, I also like the Kutra Seed a lot. Now, this card, the rally is quite good. If you could find the infantry destroyed again to survival, great. If you don't have the infantry, still it's worthwhile to drop. Now if you go on second, for example, on a mirror match, do save your um, counter ability, which reduces the energy cost of your next troop in this turn for this guy. So you can drop him in the turn four and have a clear advantage. It's not an easy troop to, cl uh, to clear, especially if you can trigger the rally, uh, rally ability. Um, but even without that, you drop this, enemy will sacrifice whatever they have to clear this guy. So usually it will end up, even though he wouldn't attack, it will usually make enemy waste a lot of cards. And in this event, having card draw is also important. Um, other good cards are just just talking about like the best ones to have in your, li in your list. You see them, you pick them. Is Camille is quite good because, again, lots of squishy cheap troops from both sides both from employs lots of cheap troops and the sister of silence and the the chaos warlord they do employ lots of cheap troops so it's good to have at least one of these as a backup plan just to clear the board and of course no world bearers list is complete without these guys now they, on their own they're not that great but they open up so many different combos that it just makes them a god tier card in my opinion. You drop these guys and then you can use your Ashen Circle for example for a big board clear plus some fast damage. You can use your Kutra Seed for example, now you have that Survivor 2 ability. You could use them with the Destiny's Hand and suddenly you have three extra 3x3 um, three three de demons in, in the board. It just you can use them on so many different things um, along with you know like this guy here um, there's another one there you can use these guys on everything now don't excessively pick it one or two will be enough in my opinion as you do not have any energy gain cards freely available um, you can't pull off all the combos that easily as you will do in the ladder go with that mental you know mental set 
but these are a must in my opinion in every deck as well just gives you so much flexibility now moving on to really good cards but not necessarily essential is one of my favorite ones is the dark matter this is probably one of the strongest cards you can play in the, seven, the turn 7 and this is usually a game finisher as well. Uh, it gets the you know the Rally Demon Hoss ability, it's a really really good drop card and again if you have that the counter card save it up for this guy because this could turn the tides, you get the flank or just get a really nice you know ward or survival um, demon host with it and it can turn the tide of the game quite easily um, other cards to look for is where is that guy where is it gone two energy not him not him here we go the bikes again cheap troop easy to use good damage and enemies lose stealth now sisters of silence is gonna have stealth other than that the Gorborn the demon warlord but of the chaos is gonna have stealth troops as well um, so stealth part is nice but not essential what you need is a cheap free damage that you can combine with your realm one way to get rid of realm's dominance early game is enemy can drop multiple troops and then you can obviously clear only one of them with your warlord then you're losing that board control that you need to keep going with this guy only two energy you can actually kill quite a bit um, think about you playing against another realm, they do drop that for energy, the Jadima Scott. Of course you can kill it with your realm, but now with two energy more you can also kill the Hordes of Cultists they just spawn in as well, or any other thing. Um, other important troops again, Sword Talgon is really good, it's one of my favorite cards to play. However, it's a bit of a risky one mainly because as much as you want to try to make the game go a little bit longer with the realm in, in with my play style there is no guarantee that the game will go that long you will have other opponents that will non-stop attack you and lower your HP quite a bit so it's a very good card but at 9 energy sometimes game finishes before that having said that um, it's really good because by 9 energy you will be having a bit of a card problem probably um, But it can also get can get countered with the 10 energy Sisters of Silence um, Raptor Squad So it's good, but it can get countered and sometimes it's a little bit too late um, Other um, Good one is the Sword Barka Bark, Bark Pal? Oh, whatever it is. Now this one, I wouldn't play it on the turn 3 probably. It's more like you have a bit of a board presence. Um, you have maybe the, the Zesual squad already on board. Or you're preparing something with your Destiny's Hand. And this guy just comes in along with that Destiny's Hand combo. Or along with your you know cheap squishy troops combo. It can get you a bit of a board control as well. A good... Um, that 3x3 three three demon control. I personally not a huge fan of this card in the event, but I have seen it work and it can work quite efficiently. Um, if you couldn't find Dark Martyr or you're looking something a little bit cheaper, also look for your Possessed Marines as well. Now, they get the cleave to you obviously and they still have that Rally Demon Host ability similar to the the you know dark matter here so if you get it with a flank for example if you're a little bit lucky it can give you quite a bit of board control and it's just a generally nasty troop to remove at six energy it's very very good in my opinion um moving on is a strange one dark blessing now historically i do not like this card at all and i still don't like this card even in the event however if you get it by an accident, you know, there was no other better choice, just a single one of them, this could be a really good finisher card. I kind of like having one just as a reserve. You play, you know, you, you possess marines, you dark martyr, anything towards a little bit of the late game, you know, you turn 7, turn 8, around there you do have energy to spend on this card, you're just not gonna play it once or twice, you could play a number of times and you already have a big troop and probably an opponent warlord is a little bit lower HP as well. 
you use this card three four times if you could and then you have a finisher on your hand that could just win you the game outright now it's a bit situational um, that's why I'm not a huge huge fan of it and of course I'm biased against this card but I think it could be one of the best finishers in the game if you don't have the Archite of, of Heresy also do you consider the Baltamis sword now it just destroys the enemy troop instead of capturing it but also stuns the enemy warlord giving a bit of a breeding room it's not the best in a sense that most troops will be cheap in this event you're not gonna see that many heavy hard hitting troops but if you don't have any other removals do you consider it because having a removal on your deck is never a bad thing other than that um, again the Jadima squad is really really good as well I, I really enjoy it um, but against the realms and against the sister of silence combos it can sort of feed the enemy so do you play it with caution uh, it sometimes work against you in a sense that the you know the crawl can kill this troop quite easily and buff his own troops making it a little bit harder for you to clean the board or the realm can just kill it and heal off it so you spend four energy for a single attack um, Ashen Circle of course very good troops even if you don't pull the combo even genuine even if you don't pull rally go fast it's still a very decent troop and it's very menacing because you put it for energy you have five attack enemy has to get rid of it or they might suffer potentially five damage and then two area damage as well to all enemies I had one run that I managed to have for somehow six of these guys and I just kept dropping them to the board. Enemy has to remove it because it's a menacing troop but they will run out of clearing at some point and, and it was just winning me game after game simply by dropping them to the board and doing nothing with it. So very good troop in my opinion. Here's a controversial one though. Where's that card? Four energy. Nope, nope here we go this one bit of a controversial one I'm sure most people will skip to this and I do not pick this one actively myself and this one can lose your games because you might lose the tempo at energy for energy and you might lose a game because of it however it won me more games than it lost me the reason behind is it gives plus one plus plan to Astartes in your deck so your cheap troops you know for example your four energy Jadima squad now is unkillable with single attack from your enemy realm it makes your troops quite a bit healthier quite a bit more tankier that plus one actually changes a lot however you might lose the tempo so do you play it with caution but it can make your troops a lot stronger especially if you have a deck that is on the faster side i do like it but not more than one um, moving on to some of the bit of the meh tier as i call it i'm just gonna show the tier list one more time so you guys have an idea where i'm coming from and what what i'm talking about as well moving on is something like has it gone to energy t in reality now this card is a must in the ladder it's amazing card however in the event it's not so much because well you need a troop to sacrifice in the first place and enemy usually plays cheap troops similar story to the baltami sword but it's not targeted and you're not getting any sort of benefits of such a stun so i'm not a huge 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 fan of it Again, if you don't have any removal, maybe aim for the Dagotal Bikes instead of the Tear in Reality as a removal card, as this guy will do more work than Tear in Reality, in my opinion. Um, also, some of the other cards, you know, big cards such as this Dreadnought card here, looks fantastic, but at 10 energy, game is probably finished by then, or it's already decided, and you drop this. It's a very risky card 
I, I will skip it. I will genuinely skip this card, although it has good stats. Um, the Sword Talgon at 9 energy with his abilities was already pushing it. And this guy doesn't bring anything to the table, such as, you know, the front line. It's just a win more card, in my opinion, and not really worth it. Um, is it 4 energy 1? Is it 4 energy? Well, nope. Yeah, this one. Now this one, I like the stats, you know, you kill uh, infantry, you gain ward, even without it, you have sneak attack with 5 damage. It looks like a fantastic card on the, on the paper, but it doesn't work in the event, or it doesn't work in the ladder either that much. Purely because you drop it, yes it's 5 damage, realm attacks it, kills it instantly, doesn't matter if you have the ward, and Ram only takes what three damage out of it, so you spend four energy dealing three damage, not the best um, deal. Similar story with the Sisters of Silence as well. They have that free energy troop, they can drop it in, they get sneak attack plus one, or they already have that executioner blade that gives them plus one attack. And and here you go, your Gallic squad is just dead, haven't done much, and potentially actually help the enemy a bit more good stats but doesn't really work. Another one that I'm not a huge fan of is Ronga Squad. Now think of this card as you shopping with your mom and you tell your mom I want you know this new Adidas shoes and your mom tells you we have Adidas shoes in home and then you go home and you see your Adidas shoes and they have five stripes rather than three. They actually name Badidas or some other knockoff brand like that. This card is trying to be Contra Seed, you know, you have Sacrifice and you spawn something. But instead of Sacrifice and you get this massive great demon that probably your enemy will just quit altogether, you get two cost random two cultists. And these two are going to be low HP, low damage cards, Ram can heal of it, the uh, Sisters of Silence can buff their troops around it, easy to clean cards. Now it's not a terrible card actually, it's you know 5 energy, you get 5-5, five, five. it's quite decent with the stats and it has unstoppable, it can work around um, as a standard drop, but it has so many other good options that I wouldn't actively seek it, but if you have it on the deck and if it's the 5th turn, you have no other thing to play, just drop it, just give enemy a target to waste their stuff. Um, moving on, some of the cards to avoid in my opinion, first off, Book of Lorga. I mean, why? Why would you need it? You don't have demons, you're not using demons in the deck, and yeah, it gives you two, two demons to use, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it at all. It's Even, even on ladder, it's, it's not that of a great card, and in the event I think it doesn't work, it's a waste of full energy that you could drop something else, a troop, a boost. Uh, instead of this, imagine dropping Raising of Monarchy. Yeah. Does the same thing in, in a sense, you, you don't have any board control, this one gives you two troops, that might be good, might be bad, this one buffs all of your future troops in your deck. Um, I do prefer this one. Another one that I'm not a huge fan of is these guys. Um, I try to skip any pickings with this guy's on, mainly because you drop it, Ram kills it, Sisters of Silence, easy to clean, they don't bring anything to the table. Do remember, we don't have that much of a card draw in the events. Yes, you have some cards, um, such as a Dark Oratory, like this one, you know, makes you draw some cards, you know, Raising of Monarchy gives you a card draw. But we don't have that much, um, you know, card draws, and we don't have that sculpture decks that everything just works and clicks together. So this cards like this is just wasting spots uh, for things that could have been much better. Um, of course, if you have it, for example, it comes with Contra Seed, but by all means take it. Um, but I try to avoid cards like these. Another card that I like to avoid is, oh, where's it gone, this Kalim guy over there, I mean, it, it doesn't work, it's it's rubbish rally, in my opinion, doesn't bring anything to the table, yes, I mentioned play big troops, but not, not, a, not the best one, 
other than that, these two here, the Golem Squad and Cortex Support, I am again not a huge fan of them. Um, I don't think they help at all with what you're trying to do. It just cannon fodder for the enemy and they end up being hindrance than actual help. And do you remember we also have Gorborn as the you know enemy warlord option as well. So you play these guys such as this one, you he will clear the board instantly, plus will deal you tons of damage out of that as well. So not the best things to play. Um, another one that is rubbish is the Secret Devotion. Skip it. Most of the time you're gonna drop, what, three troops? Uh, at the most, if you are lucky. Even more, it's gonna be, a bit, you know, easy to clean. Too expensive card, doesn't work, and it helps enemy team more than it helps you. Now, I know I've been repeating myself it, you know, it helps the enemy team, but I will explain a little bit more as well what I mean by it by individual um, tactics against enemy warlords. Now you are realm, if you are playing against a realm, I think the best thing to do is just don't attack. Focus on the troops, focus on keeping the board clean, it's a board game. If the enemy realm is attacking you, face bashing you, that's fine. Just try to control the board and try to drop as many as troops as you can. And with you know the troops that I mentioned earlier on, such as your um, Ashen Circle, for example, stuff that you could recede, and um, you know, some of the big guys as well, you know, Possess Marine and Dark Martyr. The enemy round will have a hard time actually finishing you off um, if you could keep your cool and do not attack. But again, it's a mirror match, it comes as a, as a you know, toss of a coin sometimes, but realms they usually play very fast and they not dealing any extra damage with you know free attack they have because you also have the same so the standard realm tactics that they use against other warlords suddenly becomes less relevant now if you're playing against sisters of silence um the best one at the moment is this one if you couldn't pick realm i will recommend picking this one here Kyria Cassirian, the Oblivion Knight. I'm rubbish with the names. So this one, um, you want to attack, as I mentioned earlier, once. Same with the other one as well. Just attack once. Give them the impression that you are this um, realm that you know wants to attack, that wants to rush, that doesn't want to wait. So they will be in that mindset. Now, this one spends two energy to give one free troop. With that, with that one, you can just heal yourself off. Because you heal two if you kill an enemy, and the, the troop they, they spawn in is only one. Now, if you attack in the first turn to the opponent, you will lose HP, and then you attack this if they were to play it, and then you heal back. However, if you were full HP and you're attacking these, you're not actually gaining anything. Think these as you're healing off, while the first attack is just an extra free damage to the enemy warlord. And the one big thing against the Sisters of Silence, and why this one is the, the, the best one in, in, in the you know, stables is, they suffer from card draws a lot. Crawl wouldn't work if Crawl doesn't have enough card draws, because they have lots of cheap troops, and they need to use a lot of troops to make things work, so they will run out of cards quite quickly. By all means, if you want to go more aggressive, go, but do bait them, do bait them to use their cards, and you keep cleaning the board, you have high HP, it doesn't matter if the enemy warlord has high HP, and as soon as the Sisters of Silence, they are going low cards, that's when you try, that's when you be become, sorry, that's when, when you start applying the pressure, and on top of that, because you have big cards, big HP cards, such as, you know, you know the 6, 7 energy Dark Martyr and the Possessed Marine, for example, with those cards, they not gonna have that much of a clearing chance, because they will be used to, they will be more used to realms with lots of squishy troops, um, lots of, you know, fast-paced game, they wouldn't know what to do in that scenario, their decks wouldn't be kitted out against that sort of playstyle. So you want to make them use their cards and 
and then after that, drop your big guys, and they might be able to clear one, two, but at the third one, they wouldn't have anything left. And especially if you have your Architect of Heresy card, um, keep it in your reserve, save it for the 10 energy, because if they have the Raptor card, and most of the time they happen to have in this event, you drop it then, you steal the card, and then they have nothing else left, and you just win the game. Against this one though, it's the best one because it has battle on a draw a card. Now if you have lots of squishy cards, it keeps drawing a card of course, and then it keeps that, you know, momentum of the Sisters of Silence going. You don't have easy cards to kill, he, she cannot keep the momentum, and the others do not even have that. Against Gorbon, um, Gorbon actually, when you first look at it, it looks like, oh, it's gonna be the easiest matchup for the Rome because it has Berzek, Be Be I cannot say that word, unfortunately. Um, so it has to attack to you, and then you have more damage than him. You have three attack, he has two attack, so he, it has to take more damage every turn simply by you not having any troops on board. Um, however, it has 10 more HP than you, and then it will play lots of cheap troops as well, sort of all try to overwhelm your ability to clear the board. Now the games with that one, it's, it's, it's the same tactic, you don't face bash, you wait for your time, you try to keep the board clean, and then what you want to do is drop the larger uh, troops, drop the high HP troops, you know, your 5 energy, even stuff like the, what was the one that I didn't like earlier on? This one. Um, the five energy fine squad. Where's it gone? Oh man. Yep, wrong squad. Stuff like these, for example, it's the Gorbon is going to suffer. You do not want to give Ro uh, Gorbon opportunity um, of attacking your Zesual squads. You know your Golem squad um, or Jadima squad. Stuff like that. Stuff that has low HP. You do not want to play against it because it can turn around and deal massive amounts of damage, especially if they pick Korn's favorite card as well, and then they could wipe you off the board quite easily around turn 5-6. So do not play cheap troops against it, be mindful of his ability. Having said that, stuff like the, the, the Torgal squad for example, can, it, can Gorbon wipe this one easy enough? Yes. But it will take multiple attacks probably, and it has three damage rather than two or one, so it will be a more of a strain on the Gorbon than than usual. And do you remember, if Gorbon kills your troops, it has to go and attack you as well because of his passive ability. Now, lastly, we have the event um, reinforcements just came in today. Um, I have not played against them. But I do not think they will be a big change to the what's going on now. I am still confident that Castrin and Ram is going to be the top dogs of this event. And maybe, maybe Natsuo will be a, a third one in, in what, it, what it can do. But I have not played against it. Um, again, one last time, I will be showing the image before I go. I will share this in the description below as well. This video has been longer than what I anticipated. So, thank you guys for listening to me. If you have any other suggestions for videos, anything you want to see in my channel, any deck builds, any warlords that you want to see, please do let me know as I do enjoy making videos for, for you know, the beavers like yourself. And if you have any questions, drop me a comment or join my personal Discord below. Thank you for watching the video. Stay safe and the Emperor protects.